Hello and welcome to News Click. The meeting of the eight member Shanghai Cooperation Organization has begun in the Kyrgyz city of Bishkek. To talk more about this, we have with us Prabir Prakash. Hello, Prabir. Prabir, so this is a meeting of some of the most powerful countries in the region. There's Russia, there's China, there's India, and Iran is, for instance, also an observer state. So, how, what is the relevance of this organization in today's context, and how do you see this meeting panning out? I think you have to see it in the context of what's happening in West Asia and particularly with Iran. That's a very major element of the geostrategic picture. And obviously Russia and China both have a stake in saying that Iran does not fall under, shall we say, a regime change uh, attempt, which is what the United States is making. Or if there is, if the US goes to war against Iran, then how does the whole region then shape up? This is, I think, a key issue, particularly as Iran is also a major supplier of natural gas oil to uh, China. Yeah. So that is one part of the strategic uh, axis, shall we say. And the second part of it is, of course, the Trump's trade war, right. which is affecting both uh, China and the trade war and sanctions are hurting Iran as well as Russia. So I think this is the core issues that the Shanghai Cooperation Organization is really uh, facing up to. So both the geostrategic and the trade aspects of it. And of course, the background of this is the fact that China is the major economic power in the region. And its Belt Road Initiative is something which is binding together different, or different countries in both a trade as well as an infrastructure sharing agreement. Now, you know, I think also one must distinguish between how the Belt Road Initiative, which is relatively more land-based than ocean-based, and the global trading regime, which is much more ocean-based today, operates. In an ocean-based system, <coughs> nobody can actually stop the trade from taking place because you are going through open seas. The Open Seas Agreement also ensures that nobody can really stop she's, uh, the ships from going from one country to another, as long as there are uh, seaports available. But when you come to roads, then trade is really a cooperative arrangement. It's not a competitive arrangement like ocean trade. And a cooperative arrangement means that everybody has to work together. And the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, therefore, in that sense, is different from, say, NATO, Seattle, and other kind of organization that we have seen, which are military agreements, or the World Trade Organization, which was everybody coming together to say what we will do. Of course, currently it's in doldrums. But the Belt Road Initiative is actually has to be a cooperative arrangement because land routes, land trade, means that every country has to cooperate. Otherwise, the trade freezes. It's not that China trade to Iran, for instance, through a Belt Road Initiative can take place without a corridor. And that corridor has to stretch across a number of countries. It could be, for instance, the corridor that's through Pakistan and then go to the Karachi port and then go to Iran, it could be even the Chabahar port. Right. So all of this means that these kind of things, the Chabahar port to the Iranian port, which is actually at the moment being built by India. So all of these mean that the cooperative arrangement becomes far more important than earlier ocean trade. And therefore, Shanghai co cooperation also has that strong element in it. Right. And it's also interesting because on the one hand, most of the members are countries which are in various ways, uh, they have the active part of the Belt Road Initiative. And China and Russia have also recently, on a variety of global issues, built a very working understa understand understanding. India is a bit of an outlier here because it has been pushing the US agenda. It has accepted a lot of the U.S. understanding of how the world should be. So, how exact? What exactly is India's place in this context right now? Especially considering it's also had issues with the Belt Road Initiative. See, India has always had a very, shall we say, Pakistan-centric, you know, uh, international diplomacy. So, it has not been so much centered around its own self-interest as much as isolating Pakistan as a main tenet of its foreign policy. So therefore, it seems to put on stake relationships with other countries based on their relationship with Pakistan. So that is one element. <clears throat> Take, for instance, today, the Iran issue. Now, Iran has tensions with Pakistan. <clears throat> it has had, as you know, border 
forays <coughs> by uh, forces which are inimical to Iran coming from Pakistan. But at the same time, it maintains a relationship with Pakistan. In this particular case, you can see China and Iran have really come together. And they, in the sidelines of the uh, SEO, they have had long chats with each other. Rouhani and uh, she have met and come to certain decisions on how they will behave. So they are actually treating all of this is a far more, shall we say, uh, diplomatically of not, a far more sophisticated level that they are not becoming one country centric organizations. Even if they have conflicts with that country, they are able to work out multiple relationships. India, on the other hand, seems to be far more focused that either you are Pakistan's enemy, then you are with me. If you are Pakistan's friend, then you are my enemy. Right. So this Pakistan-centric uh, proposition of the foreign uh, policy establishment, which at the moment seems to be driven, driven by the PM and his ideological uh, predisposition, right. also makes India's geostrategic autonomy more difficult. That is why you decide if China is supporting Pakistan on certain issues, then it's an enemy country, and then how do I come and play my role in SEO? Of, of course, this also means, therefore, agreeing to some kind of containment of China policy, which the United States wants to pursue. But after Doklam, I think India has backed off from, shall we say, direct confrontation with China. They have also not agreed now to the Malabar exercises again. So it does seem that they are trying to regain a bit of the strategic, strategic autonomy vis-a-vis right. -vis the US-China axis. Right. So I think there India is not at the moment going whole hog as it seemed to have been doing two, three years back. Some withdrawal from that complete alignment with the United States vis-a-vis -vis the South China Sea, vis-a-vis, -vis, shall we say, the Balabar exercises, right. the Quad as it is called, Japan, Australia, India, the, the US. Right. So all of this, there seems to be some backing off on that. But the Pakistan-centric focus still remains. Right. And if you see the Indian press, the entire thing about Shanghai Cooperation Organization right. is essentially about Pakistan right. and what China has undertaken or given undertakings vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan. As we all know, China is going to say, yes, we are against terrorism in the region. They are also affected by it. As we know, the Uyghur issue is there very much in, in China. Uh, they do face uh, Islamic uh, sectarian politics right. there. And as we know, Pakistan has been at one once upon a time the center of all of these activities. So it's not that they are kind about these things. At the same time, they delink these issues from the more, shall we say, pragmatic issues of trade, right. relationships, and so on. So China is not going to uh, support Pakistan in its, uh, shall we say, extraterritorial uh, ambitions through armed militants right. or armed terrorist groups. At the same time, it is not going to abandon uh, Pakistan Pakistan because of India's insistence right. that if unless you isolate Pakistan completely, then somehow you are violating certain tenets of international policy. I think India's lack of sophistication vis-a-vis -vis the Pakistan-China relationship is going to be a problem. But China has been very clear, SEO is not for use against any country, right. it's for cooperation. And they have said their strength, they want to strengthen relationship with India, economic ties with India. But they have also said that they obviously will continue their bilateral relationship with other countries. And I don't think SCO is going to intervene the bilateral relationship between China and Pakistan. So I think that is much more for domestic consumption, that Modi spoke hard with Xi and made China say A, B, C, D. They had conceded when they declared Masood Azhar as a terrorist, as you know, the U.S. demanded a 2,000, 3,000 crore uh, quote unquote concession because they had declared him the terrorist vis-a-vis -vis their economic ties. Right. So all of this, China has been relatively more, shall we say, flexible, while India seems to have put almost all their geostrategic ask, uh, eggs in the Pakistan basket. Right. So all the saber rattling by the press about uh, this being a key moment is just, uh, like you said, for domestic consumption. 
Well, it appears so because I'm reading the Chinese press. There is no mention of this uh, key moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, what they had to do, they have already done. Mm -hmm. As we had said at that time, declaring one person as a terrorist, and earlier also people have been uh, uh, classified as terrorists, Daud being one of them. And it that doesn't really change substantially things on the ground. And uh, it, I don't think looking at the Kashmir problem as just a foreign problem and not a homegrown problem also doesn't help us much. So this declaration of uh, terrorist or otherwise, Pakistan support to terror and what China is doing, all of this is more an externalization of internal problems at the moment rather than external problems because what we can see Kashmir is at the moment not something which has been manufactured purely by Pakistan. It is true earlier there was a lot of support to terrorist infiltration across the border. A lot of them either India has successfully stopped or has dropped. This is what the assessment of in, in intelligence agencies from what other people who have retired tell us. So given that focusing it as a, only an external problem is to actually hide from the real issues that internally the policies that Indian state is following vis-a-vis -vis minorities and vis-a-vis -vis Kashmir is going to be a long-term problem for it and externalizing it completely in this fashion doesn't really, uh, will not serve the Indian state well. Right. And finally, like you said, uh, this is happening in the middle of uh, the US-China trade war. So what possibilities does the Belt Road Initiative and others and for instance the SCO as a whole actually have in giving China some amount of leverage so to speak in actually in dealing with the trade war? You see the Belt Road Initiative and the trade issues coming out of it are relatively far slower in the way they will develop and they don't really address any of the issues coming out of the United States. Because the United States was still a $500 billion market for China. Of course, a lot of the $500 billion was also not value addition. It was the factory price that we talk about. For instance, Apple has a huge amount of imports apparently from Foxconn China. But what the Chinese value addition is only eight and a half dollars after two hundred and thirty seven dollars. So this looking at the five hundred billion dollars is misleading. I think there you have a much more short term war that is going taking place and that is not going to be addressed by the longer term Belt Road Initiative. Right. I think that has to be really discussed in terms of what's going to be happening to the global trade regime, that these are all outside WTO, the use of United States of what is called the nuclear option in WTO, the defense and security issues if you raise, it trumps other things. But if it is used for really trade balance, then obviously it has huge implications for the trading regime. So I think all of that taken together, the real issue vis-a-vis -vis US and China is not going to be addressed right over the Belt Road Initiative. I think that is going to, that's going to play out in the next 20, 15, 20, 30 right. years. Thank you, Prabir. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching NewsClick.